Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial. So today I'm going to show you how to take a 2D image in Blender. For example, this one here, which I'm going to put in the description below. And we're going to just do some really basic modeling once we've imported it, just to make a simple kind of building from that image. Now this is not going to be like something that you're going to be seeing up close. This would be ideal if you were making like a scene and you needed some little houses in the background. So from a distance, this would look real, really believable and you wouldn't notice all of the little flaws. Once you start, of, start getting in close, you can kind of see it breaking down a little bit and it doesn't make a lot of sense. So this has its limitations, but this is something that you could definitely learn and implement into your workflow. So this is literally this building here, just from one image. I'm gonna take you through the whole process in Blender and I hope you guys enjoy. So let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is come and download this image here. I'll put a link in the description below. Now you could use any kind of building image you want. This is kind of one of the more interesting ones I found that has a lot of character to it. It's on Pexels and it's 100% free. So just come here. I'd recommend downloading the largest one possible. Once you've done that, I've just put mine on my desktop here. You can see I've got that image here on my desktop. And I've also gone ahead to my edit preferences I've gone to my add-ons and I've just typed in up here image if you just type in image you're gonna see image export images images as planes make sure to tick that box so you can import images as planes once you've done that you can now go shift a go down to image and go images as planes and then I'm gonna to go to wherever it is in my case that's the desktop it might be different for you so on the desktop I'm gonna get this one pixels and Tatiana 889, you get the point. So I'm gonna grab that one, I'm gonna import image as plane. And you're gonna see here it's imported it. And if we actually hit Z and we go to material preview, we're gonna see it's also got the aspect ratio and everything correct. And it's also added the image on there for us. So if we go to our shading workspace, you can see here it has these nodes here. So all I'm gonna do here, so I'm just gonna come in here and also just um, unplug the alpha here, we don't need that. And then go back to the layout. So now we are ready to get started. So if we hit one to go into our front of graphic view, we can see we have this, but we also need, with this guy selected, we're gonna hit R, X, nine, zero, and hit enter, just to rotate it 90 degrees on the X. And then we're gonna hit um, tab into edit mode. And in edit mode here, we're gonna add in some loop cuts. So at the moment, I'm in my vertex select option here, that's fine. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hover with our cursor over one of these edges here. And if you hit Control R or Command R, you're gonna see a yellow line appearing. So once that happens, double click, and that'll add that line in. In fact, if I hit Z and I go into wireframe, you can see we have this line here. So I'm gonna hit Z again and just go into material preview. And with this line, it's we wanna kind of match it up with some of this um, these items here, like the doors and the frames. But if we were to go G and Z, just that, like we conventionally would move things, so by hitting G to move it, we're gonna see the problem is it moves the texture along. So what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna slide the edge. A simple way to do that with that edge still active is to hit G twice, so double tap G, and now we can actually slide the edge regardless of where the image is. So I'm gonna slide it up till it's on the top of these door frames here. And don't, don't worry about if it's not perfect right at the beginning, because we can always adjust the individual points as we continue. So I've added in that edge and rolled it up. I'm gonna come here to this edge over here, Control R. So if the cursor here, Control R, double click, double G, I'm gonna slide up another edge loop, put it roughly at the bottom of these, um, these top parts here. So you can see we have this line at the top and then this one at the bottom. So we're making the top parts of the door frames here. And let's go Control R over in this edge again, add another loop, double click, double G. We're gonna slide this down to where the bottom of the floor is. So you just kind of find the average point. So it's about there for me. So you can see I've added in this yellow line right here. And now I'm gonna go Control R, but I'm gonna hover over one of these middle edges. So Control R, double click, double G, and I'm gonna slide an edge to the end of the building here. Like that, you can see right here on the edge of the building. And I'm gonna do it again. Control R over here, double click, double G. I'm gonna slide in another one to the end of this door over here. So you can see I've just slided it right up against that door. And I'm gonna keep repeating. Control R, double click, double G. I'm gonna slide one to the end, the inside part of that outer door here. So you can see right there, it's not perfect. We'll adjust it in a second. And we're gonna just continue. So I'm gonna go Control R, over here, double click, double G, slide it to the edge of this middle door. Control R, double click, double G, just repeating. Bring this one in to this point here and keep doing it. So Control R, double click, double G, bring one here and just keep repeating. So it's pretty 
easy. Drag one here, Control R, double click, double G, slide one to the end of this door, Control R, double click, double G, and slide one in to the inside part, and just do it for these last two here. Double, Control R, double click, double G, hover over here, Control R, double click, double G, to the end of the door, like that. So at the moment, that's um, looking pretty okay. And you can see even here at the top, it's almost lined up with the windows. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just select this vertex here and we're gonna go double G just to slide it till it lines up with this window a bit more. And then grab this one, double G and just slide it. So you can always grab vertices if you go to vertex select and actually slide the vertices around themselves just so it matches up a little bit better. Okay, so now we also need to create the parts for up here. So we're gonna hover over one of these edges with the cursor, control R, double click, double G, and slide down to the bottom of these windows. So roughly like that. You can see over here it's a bit too high, so we're just gonna hold in shift and select these vertices here, double G, and just slide them down like that. Also grab these two, double G, and just slide them down. So just try and adjust them till it's all roughly looking good. Then I'm gonna come over here, over this edge, Control R, double click, double G, and I'm gonna slide up another edge to the top, like that. And then over here, over one of these edges, Control R, double click, double G, and I'm sliding up one more edge. We can see over here, a little bit too high, so I'm just gonna select these ones, double G, just to slide them down. So you can spend as much time as you want refining this. Um, even down here, you can see some of these um, around the doors. Like over here, you can see it's quite extreme. Select this vertex, double G, and just slide it to the side just to kind of fix that issue. In fact, select both of these vertices under the door here at the left, both of these underneath here, and double G, and just slide them up like that until it matches that door frame a little bit better. So you can spend as much time as you want doing this. I'm just going to keep it simple for this tutorial. But what we're trying to do is just create the basic outlines for these structures here before we extrude them. And you can see we have a little window up here. Simply just select this vertex and this one here, double G and just slide them to the side. And then we're gonna come here, control R, double click, double G, slide up an edge. And then over here, over this edge, control R, double click, double G and slide in an edge here, just like that. Okay, so now we're gonna start extruding some things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my face select I'm gonna hold in shift, I'm gonna select this face over here. And while I'm holding in shift, I'm going around and selecting these faces here to make up the door. In fact, what we might actually have to do is just add in one more edge here. So just go back to your edge select here, or whatever, your vertex select. And I'm sorry about this, but we might just have to actually add it in, I just noticed. So we're gonna hover over one of these edges here with our cursor, Control R, double click, double G, and just slide in one edge like that. I guess, because we need to have this bottom lip here as well and just come in here and adjust some of these vertices accordingly. So I'm gonna select these guys here, double G, just to slide them down. So you can see what I'm doing here. It's not too hard to understand, just trying to kind of line that up with the bottom there. So now that I have that out of the way, I can go back to my face select, and I'm gonna select these faces here. So I'm just holding in shift as I'm doing this, and I'm also using control. So I just go around, select all of these, and then do the same here. So I'm gonna do it relatively quickly because I'm doing a tutorial. And don't worry about this cabinet over here. Um, you probably won't even notice that unless you're really close up to this building. If it really bothers you, you can just go to Photoshop or something and just kind of simply clone this out of the clone tool. We can even do it in GIMP if you want. So I'm gonna select these faces here. Okay, so I forgot to add in a cut over here, but just leave that one for now. So with just these two doors here, um, yeah, also just maybe select these faces down here. We're gonna go E to extrude them forward just a little bit, like that. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, Control R, double click, double G, just slide in one edge for the side here. And go to your face select, and then just select these faces around here. Um, okay, so this one you can see here isn't quite lined up, so I'm just gonna select this edge here. So holding and shift, just selecting these edges here, double G just to slide them to the side. And I'm gonna just grab this here, double G and just slide that over. So now once I have that, I'm just gonna select this face here, holding and shift, select the rest of the faces. So just these ones here, like that. And I'm also gonna select this one here and that one there, and this one, right here. So all of these ones along here, you can see where those kind of bricks are. 
and we're just going to go E and just extrude them out just a little bit. Okay, and we can see over here, we might have to select this vertex here. Double G, just slide it over and select this one. Double G, just slide it over. So just mess around with that as much as you want. Um, doesn't have to be perfect. And um, yeah, so let's start with these ones up here. So I'm going to come in here, Control R, double click, double G, just slide in a, another edge so we can um, make the top ridge of the window here. And now we're going to go to our face select. We're going to select all of these faces around the window. And don't worry about objects like this antenna that are in the way. We'll get to that in a second. So I'm just holding in shift and I'm going around and selecting all of these faces that make up the outside of the windows. And I'm going to go E just to extrude them out just a little bit. And I'm going to come in here, Control R, double click, double G, just slide in an edge for this window here. And the same thing here. Just sliding in an edge there and an edge in the inside here. So I can select the outside here and just bring these out a little bit. So I'm just selecting these guys, holding in shift, hitting E to shoot it out just a little bit. So now we've got some free dimensionality there. And I'm also going to come over here to the side. I'm going to go Control R over here, double click, double G, and just slide in an edge like that. So what we're going to do now is with our edge select enabled, we're actually going to go shift Alt and click on this edge here. And we're going to hit X and delete vertices to get rid of that. And we're going to do the same thing with this edge. Select this edge over here, X and delete vertices. So we only want the house here. And we're going to go shift alt and click on this bottom edge here and that'll loop select this whole edge over here. Or you can just go to vertex select if you want and just sort of circle it like, um, select it with the select tool just like that. And then we're going to go into our right orthographic view by hitting free. And then we're going to go G and we're just going to move this forward like that, like that. So now if we go back into our material preview, we can see we have the floor at the bottom here as well. And it's not perfect. You can see we have some extrusion issues here in certain places, but it's at that point later where we can refine that and I'll show you how to do that. But for now as well, um, I'm just going to select, I'm going to go shift alt and click on this outer edge here, our vertices. So we've selected these vertices here on the edge and also just select these ones here on the edge as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to go E and we're going to go Y and we're going to extrude this whole thing back like this about that much. So now we have the side of the building as well. If I hit Z and I go into render view, we can see that's what it looks like. Now we're having some weird shading issues going on here. So what we're going to do is just hit A to select everything and then go Alt N and just recalculate outside. And if you're still kind of having this weird shading issues, what you need to do is you go to your materials settings here, go down to your, just your settings under the material and just come here to blend mode and just make that opaque. So we want opaque for both of the shadow mode and the blend mode. So now that should fix that issue. So now we're going to go back into edit mode here and you can see um, this building, you know, if you go really close, you can see there's a lot of issues, but just kind of looking from the distance, you can kind of make a believable building in the background. It could be kind of like a quick little asset you could add to a scene. But I'm going to show you now how we can use the rest of the image to kind of fill in some of these dead spaces here and kind of get rid of some of these stretch marks. So what we're going to do, go back into edit mode, but we also need to go into our, edit, our UV editing workspace here. So over here on the side, make sure it hit the go in material um, view and over here we have our workspace. So we're going to come over here and click on a face select and then we're going to just select all of these faces on the side here. We're going to hit U and unwrap and now we can come over here select all of these and we can move them around by hitting G, S to scale and just kind of line that up somewhere where you feel it, it'll work. I guess I'm going to go with something like that. Now, once again, like I was saying, the idea with this whole technique here is not to make something um, that you're going to look up really close. It could be like just an acid in the background. You can make like a city block. So from the distance, we just kind of want it to be kind of believable to the brain. It doesn't have to be perfect. So even something like that on the side, um, reusing this image should be fine. And let's just do the exact same thing here on the other side. So we're going to make sure to select all of these faces on the side. And you're going to go U to unwrap. Hit A over here to select everything and then you can just um, rotate accordingly. You can hit S to scale over here and just kind of find something that you feel works. Okay, so I'm just going to move mine over here maybe. Just try different things out and um, see what works for you. Okay, so I'm going to go something like that. 
So you can see just using one image now, we kind of have this block forming here. And another thing you can do to kind of get rid of these stretch marks here. So let's actually set up a camera quickly. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna go Shift A. I'm just gonna add in a camera. I'm gonna hit zero to go into camera view. And I'm just gonna move the camera into a position that looks good. And this is also select our building here and just go to our modifiers and give this a bevel modifier. So if you go into wireframe, you can see everything has a nice bevel. So just mess around with the amount here and just increase the segment count. And that's just gonna smooth things out. Go to object mode and enable shade smooth as well. So now we can hit Z, go into material view. And now we can just um, work on individual elements. Now we kind of have a nice framework here. And it's at this point where you can easily come in you can always add in more loop cuts. So I can come over here, for example, Control R, double click, double G, slide in another edge. I can do the same thing down here. And I can essentially just add them in wherever I need to add in a loop cut. So I can grab this little segment here now, for example. And I might wanna just extrude that out a little bit, just to add a little bit of an embellishment. And I might be able to come over here to the side, grab these edges here and double tap G just to slide them and kind of adjust them. And then I'm gonna select this edge here. I'm gonna hit E to extrude them out. You can spend as much time as you want doing it properly, but you can kind of see what I'm getting at here. Um, this is very simple method of making something from an image. And when it comes to this antenna here, what you could do is you could simply go into your object mode, just add in a um, circle here, RX90, hit enter. S to scale it down and just roughly place it where that antenna is, like this. And then tap into edit mode. And we're just gonna get and extrude in these vertices. G, Y, move it back a bit and then E to extrude S to scale. G, Y, move it back a little bit and then hit F to fill it. So now we're gonna just go into object mode, bring this guy forward a bit, object, shade smooth, and let's go to our materials and let's just go to the drop down and give it that same material as a building. Now if we go Z and we go rendered, or so we go Z and we go to our material preview, all we have to do now is go into edit mode of this new dish selected, hit A to select it and then we're gonna go U to unwrap. Then you can come over here in this workspace, select this and then scale it down, hit G and move it over to where this dish is, like that. And if you want to, you could even model that little metal bit that comes out, the little antenna on there, and also project that. But now we have this dish here, and you can now go into your camera view, and now you can select this dish, and you can double tap R, and you can kind of rotate. You can hit G, Y, move it forward a bit, and just place it so it's covering up that spot over there. And it kind of now looks a little bit better. See, so now it actually looks like a three-dimensional object. You can always add in some wires, a little antenna, and you can take all of these little things like the wires, you can do the exact same thing. You can add in different objects. So I can add in, for example, a, a cube here, scale it down, but also give it that same building material. And I can come to this electrical um, piece here, this box. I can place it right here. I can go into edit mode, just bring it up a bit. And now all I have to do is I, have, I can go to my camera view. I'm gonna hit A to select all of this geometry and I'm gonna go U, I'm gonna go project from view. Then I'm gonna come over in this window here, select it and move it on top of that um, power box here. So now if we go into our material preview, we can see we have that thing standing out a little bit, a little bit more three dimensionally. So that is a really easy way of turning um, images into actual 3D buildings in Blender. So I'm gonna go back to my layout and um, you, like these stretches here on the side, you can also just select them whenever you want. So you can select these stretches like that. And you can go into your UV editing workspace. You can go U and just unwrap. And then over here, you can select them, rotate them around and move them and place them somewhere to kind of fill in that space. And even though it's not the exact same material as it originally was, to your brain, that's almost still a little bit believable. So that's a really quick way of getting rid of these um, stretch marks. You can just unwrap them, move them around over here in a UV editor, find somewhere just to place them like that. So that's how you can reuse the same image. So just from one image, 
you can spend as much time as you want on it, but you can make something that looks really cool. And a nice kind of background acid. And I've actually made whole city scenes just making little, um, taking little shacks like this and little old houses. Just pretty much making them from boxes like this and extruding some basic parts. And um, it, it, can, it can give you a relatively um, believable background effect or kind of like a scene. So this has its limitations, like I said, it really depends on what you're using it for. But if we were to actually, um, you know, just go to Eevee here and enable our render settings. If I went Z, uh, sorry, if I went Shift A, added in a light, add in an area light, hit Z, go render it. We can, you know, add some lighting on here and kind of come to the light settings, mess around with that. So you can kind of now see the shadows that are being cast here. So that is how you make a house. So I'm just keeping this tutorial really basic. Um, just kind of introducing this concept to some of you if you haven't already seen this kind of thing. So this is how you can kind of just take a 2D image and um, keep working at it. And you can get different images. So for example, you can get an image of a roof and then kind of model a roof on this and project from that image. So you can even combine different images. So I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial. I hope you found this little tutorial useful. You've learned something and I'll see you next time.